Welcome to this week of the Stitchery Sampler. Hope you guys are enjoying the process. I know that each block is different. Some are easy, some are harder or require a lot more concentration, um, which was the idea behind this sampler that we would stretch our skills on some of them and then find some of them easy. So if you are catching up, which I hear that a lot of you guys are, I don't feel like you have to finish one completely, even some of the more complicated ones um, before you move on to the next one. Um, you could be working on a couple blocks at a time. Uh, you can skip a difficult block and come back to it later or just work on it alongside of the easier ones. So hopefully you guys are enjoying the process and here we go. Welcome back friends to the Stitchery Sampler so along. Um, this week we are on block 10. Can't believe we're this far. Um, this one is called the zigzag block. And I know it's not a favorite of many of you guys. You're dreading it given all of these little flying geese. So I just thought I would talk about it a little bit. Um, if you guys look at this block up close, um, there are a few points when you're piecing this that don't really matter. Um, and what I mean by that is that when you're trying to match up points, there are some points that are really pronounced in a quilt and some that you just, your eye can't see. So obviously we're always striving to have all of our points. However, in this zigzag, so let's let's take this green one right here. Um, there's a set of points that don't matter. And th those are the ones that are within each little block set. So this is your unit. When you piece half of it with the other half, and I'll show you in a second, this point here, and this point here, meaning they're not gonna really show because they're going to melt into the background on this side as well as on that side. The ones that will show a lot are the ones where you're joining one unit to the other unit. And that's going to be this inner point and this outer point on each one. So that would be two, four, six, eight, ten points that are going to show the most. Whereas the other ones, these here, really don't show up as much in the pattern. And so I wouldn't fret too much about those. So what that means is I'll show you that in a second. Um, but basically here are your units. You're gonna wanna choose three, fa uh, sorry, five fabrics or five colors. I'll show you in mine, I went totally scrappy on each one. Um, so let me go ahead and show you guys my layout my scrappy scrappy layout okay so for my very scrappy quilt i decided to go with red blue yellow green and orange but instead of doing one print i started to use up scraps and so as you can see on here there's one two three four four different reds four or five different blues and so on <clears throat> I kept each unit the same fabric for continuity. I tried making it totally mi mishmashy and I didn't like it. Um, but having those units be the same, but each unit be different, I really loved the way that looked. And so here are your pieces. Basically for each one of your little units, you're going to have a flying geese where the fabric is on the background. Sorry, you guys can't see that and then one where the fabric is on the outside. And of course, this is all in the pattern. But what I mean about points that don't matter as much is when you're joining these two units here, this point here, if you lose it a tiny bit, and this point here, if you lose it a tiny bit, are not going to really destroy your design in any way, okay? Like literally in any way. So don't worry about that so much. You're gonna have your two pieces. You're going to join them the way I would do that as I would always sew from the side where I can see my point. So that would be from this side because then I can make my seam go right in that spot. And then when you open it up, that should be fine. But again, if for some reason it isn't, don't worry about it. So that's your unit. That's for most of it. Then there's this little side unit. So sorry, here's just another example of one of the one piece of this unit, right? So you're going to sew your regular sew and flip, flip that out for this section and then the opposite for the other section. Then you have this little side unit, which is just basically same exact pieces, 
just piece different. So this one you're going to sew here and flip and here on the bottom and flip to get that little piece that you're going to add to the end of each of your rows to kind of continue the zigzag. Now, another little hint for the, do, the points that do matter. Um, as you can see, I highly recommend that you press those seams open right there when you're piecing on this side and on this side. It will help matching those two right there a lot. So I would definitely press open and I would put a pin right there and right here. As those are your two spots, your two joins that you actually do care about. As if those are really off, it will it will take away from the design of the zigzag. Again, nothing tragic will happen, but those are the two points that you wanna pay attention to on each row, so these guys. And um, that's it, that's my big hint or um, things that you can get away with and things that you uh, probably can't get away with as easily. Um, wanted to show you guys a little, a few of the blocks we finished up. Let's see, the dash quilt from last week. That one's all done and scrappy. And I don't know if I've shown you all of these other ones. So we finished up this one with those tiny little gray corners and then going back a little bit on some of these other ones. So hopefully um, your zigzag block will not make you too crazy. Given that this is a sampler, what I do love about it is that you only have to make one block and then you get to move on to another one, which really is the beauty of a sampler like this one. So I hope you guys enjoy the process. Thanks so much and see you next week.